welcome everybody. This is another segment of Friday Photography Live. Without further ado, I want to introduce you to Daniel Dunham. Thank you. I was raised on a farm between Fresno and Sanger. What I'd like you to look at is the things that, that people just walk right on by. This is a peach blossom. That's a peach blossom after the petals fall. If you don't have a picture of almonds with a bee on it, you don't take pictures of agriculture. <laughs> That's what almond blooms look like after the petals fall. We'll look a little bit at fruits and nuts. Strawberries. Clean peaches. These are our uh, uh, Cabernet grapes up in the uh, Santa Rosa area. There's a cotton ball. Uh, a cherry is the latest bloomer. They bloom last and they, and they harvest first. Even a lowly ear of corn. How many of you know that there's about 200 acres of prickly pear cactus in the Salinas Valley? There's a dull, boring picture right there. I, don't, I stuck that in just to show you what everybody takes. These are young carrots over in the Salinas Valley. Gallo bought a whole bunch of property up there was deemed unsuitable by the locals for growing grapes. They took the topsoil off, then they reconfigured the subsoil. There's even a decent picture just in a bunch of straight roads. That's a bug's eye view of a corn patch. Celery. Standard grapes. But that's also a vineyard. These are old vines and vendels in Lodi. People talk about color on the East Coast. We've got as much color here. That's a nectarine orchard. Wow. It's just amazing what comes if you if you just open your eyes, slow down to 50 instead of 65. <laughs> this is uh, leaf lettuce, the stuff you get in the backs. The East Coast doesn't have color like that in the spring. Kind of a whimsy deal. The balloons crash on a regular basis there. Napa. We have people in Ag. Now you've got your, this is this is your, your average glamour shot. And then you go to the not so glamour shot. And then you got the butt ugly glamour shot. This guy is picking into the bucket. These ladies are grading peaches. Okay, that's a young man clipping oranges. Young man pruning peach trees. Now I like structure in pictures. I don't know. I think that this vineyard would probably be a little bit less interesting picture without the old bunkhouse in it. Same theme, different variation. Another one. That's the tank house at uh, Sterling Vineyards. Got to have something for the troops in there. That is part of the agro-industrial complex. That's a picture of the plant that I worked. I worked for the company that owned that plant for 13 years. That's a grain elevator. There's a different picture of it. I love these. What's, what's old is new again. This is up at Rio Vista. You go on Highway 12 and they have an electric orchard. Everybody's interested in water. Pictures of water are always in demand. I sell a fair number to agricultural companies that are putting together brochures or ads. That's your standard watering irrigation of corn. This is, this is flood irrigation. This will not be seen much anymore. These are manzanillo olives that are just about ready to harvest. One on the, on the left has had plenty of water. This is what happens when they're under irrigated. Agriculture in action. This is actually a, a rig that sprays both sides of the rows. This guy here is cultivating cauliflower. To me, the angle of the picture is just a little bit better. It gives you a flow <coughs> down towards the bottom. Now here's one that you don't want to get directly in front of. This guy's booking along at about 110 miles an hour. His wheels are two feet above the rice and a foot above water. That's just a picture showing a spray operation. You're looking at just over $2 million worth of equipment. There's another kind of action <coughs> shot. A little spraying going on. Those are tomatoes. Again, a different angle makes a different picture. This is Antel, uh, Tanamora and, and Antel, probably the largest lettuce growers in the world. You just can't imagine the amount of hand, hand labor that it takes to put a head of lettuce in your, in your refrigerator. It used to be that you had to be a pretty good tractor driver to drive straight roads. Now, these tractors have all got GPS in them, and the only thing that the guy in the tractor does is watch a little orange bubble on the heads-up display on the windshield. Okay, now we got inaction. 
that's just an old spray rig. That's an old cedar. That's a uh, the front end of a case tractor. Now, I do some special projects, and I, I did one for a fella. He wanted me to go out and take a picture when the buds were already closed, but just about ready to open, and then come back when they reached what you call pink bud, and then come back and take a picture of the next stage of growth, and then in full bloom. The object of the uh, program was to make a brochure, and then full bloom, and then shuck split, or when the nuts get fairly large and are continuing to grow, and then post-harvest. We need to talk a little about crop damage. This got a little bit too much fertilizer. Somehow, all of the fertilizer got into this site. Got a call from one of my customers who said, well, we got a guy that just called me, one of our customers, who claims that your product killed his, his almond tree. You can see dead trees, leafless areas, damage, and that isn't right. That should all be green and pretty. We uh, started looking around, and you'd have a good tree, and you'd have a dead tree. What really happened here is that they have this drip line, and they applied too much fertilizer. These trees, the lines were plugged, and they didn't get much water and much fertilizer. These guys got a whole bunch, and it killed them. You have crop problems, and what we can do with photography here is we can show what these problems are, and people will remember it. This is what they call a shot hole. It's a fungus, peach leaf curl. It's basically athlete's foot for trees. That's anthracnose, a disease. What it does is it disrupts the flow of nutrients and fluids up and down the tree. Then you don't get the starches and the sugars where you need them. You don't get the nutrients where you need them in the plant. That's called scab. And again, it's a disease. It's going to reduce the size of the nuts because you're... The starches and sugars are in the leaves, and the process of ripening is to bring those starches and sugars down into the fruit or the nut. The potassium, nutritional deficiency within, within a, a grapevine. Potassium is the carrier for, for starches and sugars. Potassium is stripped out of the older leaves, and it goes to the newer leaves. This is magnesium deficiency, not far different from potassium deficiency in looks on, on Chardonnay. But this is the same deficiency 100 feet away in a different field on Shiraz, on red grapes. This is manganese. This is magnesium deficiency. The manganese strips from the uh, center out towards the rain. This one just uh, takes it all at the same time. I work for a company part-time just having fun, and I do research and development. I will try different fertilizers against each other, against no fertilizer at all. Then you take this framework here and you uh, lay it down after the nuts are shaken and you pick up all the nuts in that square and you do this for several trees and then you take them home and this is my friend, I, I have all my neighbors working at this, they just have fun and he's hand shelling almonds. Then another neighbor is getting some of the detritus out of them. And then we will count and weigh nuts to determine if there is a difference in size, weight, what have you. And these are crimson seedless grapes. And what happens with a crimson is gives you a varied maturity at harvest. That's the product that we were putting on. <laughs> if you notice, there's a lot more uniformity. There's a lot more buds. I'm going to end with life's little ironies. You know, that's up on the Sacramento River, <laughs> south of Cortland. If I had one of these in my wheat field, I wouldn't even plant that sucker. Anyway, that, to me, that's ironic. When you don't spray, you get milk thistle. I, I'm, I'm in favor of organics. I'm in favor of su sustainable farming. I'm not, I'm not a poison freak, but I'll tell you, there are certain things you got to do to farm you know, efficiently. And then the last one. This is this is not an ad picture, but it just tickles me. And with that, I'm going to say thank you. Thank you. What I want you to see is that you there's there's things to take pictures of out there. There's beauty and there's there's symmetry and there's a whole bunch of things that uh, a lot of people are just missing, and it's right here.